Neural Markers of Religious Conviction, an Investigative Study, presented by Greg Wagner. This video will investigate the legitimacy of the article and critically interpret the results and their implications. To start, who is the author and what is his motivation for writing the article? Michael Inslich is an assistant professor of psychology at the University of Toronto. He exists in the staff directory, so the article seems legitimate so far. The article also received plenty of media attention from sources such as the Globe and Mail, Canada's national newspaper, the Toronto Star, the National Post, the Ottawa Citizen, the Montreal Gazette, the Atlantic Monthly, and the New Scientist. So obviously, this article has received plenty of press, but that does not necessarily mean that it's legitimate. We also need to examine where the resources for the experiment came from to make sure that the sponsoring group or company did not have a special interest in the results. For example, I would not trust this article if the sponsor was a religious or anti-religious group, as they might try to manipulate the results to be in line with their beliefs. The first sponsoring group is the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. They are an agency of the Canadian government founded to further research in the social sciences and humanities. The second sponsoring group is the Canada Foundation for Innovation. They are a corporation set up by the Canadian government to fund infrastructure-related research projects in Canada. Overall, both groups seem to have non-biased motives for funding the research. Now we know the article is legitimate, so let's move on to the experiment itself. The article begins with a short examination of feedback loops related to anxiety. When a person detects that they have made an error or a mismatch, a feedback loop triggers, resulting in anxiety, which is described as a state of uncertainty. This helps people rethink simple and complex goals. The anterior cingulate cortex, or the ACC, is the section of the brain responsible for inhibiting the anxiety feedback loop. Thus, the ACC is part of a general system for changing behavior during a state of anxiety. This is the setup for the basic principle of this experiment, which is that strong religious convictions will decrease ACC activity because strong religious convictions lead to less anxiety in the first place. Thus, the overall hypothesis is that religious conviction buffers states that are detected and moderated by the ACC. The hypothesis was investigated through two different experiments. Both experiments measured ACC activity using an electroencephalograph, or EEG. An EEG is a series of electrodes attached to the scalp which measure changes in brain activity. The activity related to anxiety from getting a problem wrong is called error-related negativity, or ERN. The amplitude of ERN was the measured value in both experiments. Both studies also utilized a color-matching Stroop task. A Stroop task is when participants are asked to name the fun of presented words. Some words spell the names of other colors, which makes the task relatively difficult. Here's an example of a Stroop task. Say the color of each word out loud. Ready? Go! In case you missed it, the correct answer to the third line was green, red, purple, blue. The first study, Religious Zeal. 28 right-handed participants from a variety of backgrounds participated in the study. They each took scaled tests to measure their religious conviction, plus many scales to control outside variables. The participants completed the Stroop task and had their negativity measured using the EEG. The results indicate that, as predicted, greater religious zeal is correlated with less ERN activity. This means that people with greater religious zeal exhibited less control-related neural activity after they made an error. The results also indicate that greater religious zeal is connected to slower, more careful responding. Below are graphs which contain the results, plus an image of where the EEG changes were measured, right in the ACC, as predicted. Outside variables, such as self-esteem and behavioral inhibition, were controlled and statistically ruled out as the cause of the observations. The summary of the variable control charts are shown below in tables 1 and 2. 
The second study measured participants' belief in God. 22 right-handed participants were sampled, and their religious affiliations were not recorded. Participants took surveys which measured their level of belief in God. They were also surveyed for other possible variables such as IQ and emotional stability. Participants completed the same Stroop task mentioned in Experiment 1 and had the same EEG readings taken. The results of the second experiment show that greater belief is correlated with less ERN activity after an error and was unrelated to correct responses. Once again, the EEG activity was located in the AACC, as shown in the bottom picture. These two tables show correlational values for outside variables. As can be seen in both charts, the correlation between greater belief and lower ERN upon a mistake does not diminish even after outside variables are removed. Overall, the author's main conclusion is that religious conviction is associated with reduced neural responsivity to uncertainty and error on a generic decision-making task. The authors suggest that religious conviction buffers anxiety by providing meaning to all aspects of everyday life, which acts as a template to inform predictions about oneself and the world. So what do these results mean? Is religious conviction a good thing? I think the topic is still open for debate and needs more research. New experiments and ever-progressing technology will eventually shed more light on consciousness and religion. But until then, ponder, contemplate, and draw your own conclusions.